This is Mogai. This train terminates here. Please ensure that you take your luggage and personal belongings with you when leaving the train. I've just arrived at Malgai to do the West Highland Way. It's a couple of years since I took this on. It wasn't very successful. Um, had to get rescued after taking a little bit of sunstroke. So this time I'm doing it in seven days. I'm using campsites and hopefully that strategy will work. So here I am for seven days in May on the West Highland Way. Here I go. It's customary to touch the obelisk at the start of the 96 mile walk from Mulgai to Fort William. And who am I to break with tradition? As I set off, it's looking all too familiar, because actually it was just one year since I took on this walk and failed miserably. And that's why I'm feeling more determined than ever to make it to the end. And as I pass the poster on the trail, I'm looking forward to the seven days ahead. I've decided to take a slightly different approach this time to doing the West Highland Way. The last time the plan was just to stop when I got tired and just wild camp on the spot. However, it didn't quite work out for me. Um, I did get that bit of sunstroke and had to get Trish to come out and pick me up. This time I definitely want to do it. I don't want to make the same mistake again. So I've decided this time I'm going to do it over seven days and I'm going to stay at campsites. So these campsites, I've pre-booked them all. So the benefit of that is that I know I've definitely got somewhere to pitch up tonight and I'll be able to have a shower, which is absolutely wonderful. Hello, you got a stick? And the thought of having a shower after a long day's walk really appeals to me, actually. And there'll probably be somewhere to have something to eat at most of these places too. The downside, of course, is that you're taking the risk on the weather. It's all booked, so if it's torrential rain, then you've just got to go. You just go and you get wet. Uh, and that's not much fun. So I'm really hoping that I get the good weather and so far I've been really lucky, but I'm only half an hour in What a good boy and normally I've got some treats, but I don't have any today because I'm out doing this walk The walk through Mugduk Woods leads to Craigallan Loch and I can't help feeling that the trail is breaking me in gently I've arrived at the Beech Tree Restaurant and Cafe Bar. The entrance is on the main road, and as I enter, the soup, toasty and cake deal for a tenner catches my eye. So that's what I have. But I don't hang about as I'm keen to move on. Further on, there's this honesty box. I have a quick look, but I'm not tempted, as it's not long since my lunch. A bit more walking and I arrive at Gart Ness. There's a few more miles of road walking before I arrive at Drimmon Camping. That's me at Drimmon Campsite. Arrives here about three o'clock. I just got pitched up straight away. Uh, it's quite a busy little place. Lots of single man tents here. And yeah, really, really quite busy. I'm actually in the barn at the moment having something for my dinner. It's about five o'clock, so I'm having this pasta. Bolognese. You just basically pour some boiling water into the bag. Give it a good old stir. 
and then pretty much tuck into it. So I'm going to have this, and then I'm going to have uh, coffee, cereal bar. I think that'll be me for tonight. It's morning, and I've just left Drimmon campsite. Now I'm feeling decidedly lighter this morning and the reason for that is I've decided to use a baggage transfer service to take my big rucksack the rest of the way and they'll drop it off at each of the campsites that I'm going to. Uh, the reason I did decide that was the pack was weighing in at about 14-15 kilograms and I think I'll just enjoy the walk a lot more. Uh, at first I thought, well, it's a little bit of a cheat, but then I was having breakfast this morning and then our four guys sitting there, and you know this, we're all doing it. Every single one of us have decided to go for the baggage transfer service. It makes a lot of sense. I'll enjoy the walking off a lot more. Anyway, today I've got 12 miles. I'm heading to Cashel campsite on the banks of Loch Lomond via Connick Hill. coming up to Connick Hill, which is two and a half miles in length and 350 metres in height. Doesn't sound a lot, but after walking all this way, I know it's going to be tough. The steps up are steep. They take me to the point where you can choose to go up to the summit. I decide to go for it and start the ascent to the top. The higher I get, the trail gets narrower and narrower, and at some points it's only as wide as a single boot. I didn't manage to get to the top the last time I went over Connick Hill, so I'm looking forward to reaching the summit. The view from the top doesn't disappoint. There are several humps on this hill, and the end one promises to give the best views, so I start making my way down towards it. The best views of Loch Lomond are from here. The trail on the way down is extremely steep. This section of the trail is closed, and there's a diversion in place while they relay some of the trail. The last time that I did this path, it was absolutely treacherous. It was really, really big drops, really quite dangerous in points. You had to be very, very careful. And now they've put this fantastic path in. Not quite finished yet, obviously, but I can't imagine the work that's been put in to get it to this stage. The last part of the descent is through the welcome shade of a woodland which takes me to Balmaha and lunch at the Oak Tree Inn for a bowl of Cullen Skink. That's a Scottish soup made with smoked haddock. After lunch I head through the Tom Weir Memorial Garden. Tom was a famous Scottish explorer, writer and TV presenter. Then a quick look over the bay before pressing on to Cashel campsite. Well, that's me, I'm all pitched up, as you can see in the background, uh, and I'm just having a little coffee to keep me going, because it's only four o'clock, not quite time for me to cook up yet. It was quite a tough one today, uh, particularly going over the top of Conic Hill. But if I think that was tough tomorrow, now that's going to be a challenge. I've got 20 miles today, and everyone says this is the toughest stretch along Loch Lomond. That's all tomorrow. It's the morning of day three today, and it's Cashel campsite to uh, Ben Glass farm campsite, right the way along Loch Lomond. It's going to be a 20 miler for me, so it's going to be, I think, the toughest day that I'm going to have on this walk, certainly in terms of mileage, 
but also I believe it is meant to be a pretty tough stretch as well along Loch Lomond. So it's quite an early start because I'm going to need as many hours as I can get. It's a very pleasant and easy going start to the walk on day three through woodland and shorefront, taking me to the youth hostel at Rower Denon. This is also where you can start a walk up Ben Lomond, which is a fantastic walk, but I'm not going to do it. It's uh, too much of an excursion for me when I'm on the West Highland Way. However, I did do it last year with my daughter Gemma. We wanted to do something before she headed off to Australia, so that's what we did. We picked a great day for it and off we went up Ben Lomond. It's a lovely path all the way up. There's lots of scenic spots to stop and admire the views and I remember we had lunch at the top and just spent some time together. Right, go on then. Did it! High <laughs> five! And coming down the other side, you come down the Tarmigan Ridge. You can come down the same way that you went up, but we decided to go down the Tarmigan Ridge, which was a little bit more tricky, some jagged rocks, but worth it, definitely worth it taking that route. For us, it was all about making some memories before Gemma headed off. Uh, talking of which, I'd really better head off. I've not got all day to do this, and I've got all the way to Ben Glass to go. Ah, this is the War Memorial. Let's have a look. There's a little fork in the trail here. And it's a decision point which way to go. Either you go the really difficult route, which is down that way, along the banks of the loch, or you take this way, the top road, which isn't quite as difficult. Uh, still challenging all the same. Either way, it takes you to Inversnaid, and that's my next stop. The trees are a lot thicker here, a lot denser. And it's a bit dark. And I haven't seen anyone for a long time, actually. Just me collecting my thoughts. Oh, me and a beetle. There was a beetle. And I'm hoping that Inversnaid is going to be coming up soon because I'm really tired. It's a lot further than I thought it was going to be. I'm still plodding away. Uh, it's about 20 past 12. And hopefully I'll get there in time for lunch. Wow, now here is something to see. If I can just get over this little burn. A huge sea of Scottish bluebells. Wow. Look at that. They're absolutely at their best in May and June. Inversnaid at last. There's the falls. And there's the hotel over there. Huge place. Hopefully they can fit me in. Well, that was Inversnaid and I've had my lunch. And jolly nice it was too. I had a Kit Kat, a packet of crisps, and a lemon drizzle cake. Are you jealous? All oh, washed down with a pint of cider. They stop serving at half past two. What time do I walk through the door? 2.40. Actually, 2.39. I don't know. Anyway, next stop is Ben Glass. I think I've got about seven or eight miles to go and this is going to be really tough. I know it is. It's uh, very, very rocky. So I'm thinking about, I'm going to have to use two hands, right? So with uh, these things and just be very, very careful. So I will take some shots on the way. And when I get to Ben Glass, I'll sit down and I'll tell you all about it. And this is Ben Glass campsite. And what a place it is. But I didn't sleep there last night. I slept here. Yes, you guessed it. It's actually the next morning. Wow, walking along Loch Lomond. Yesterday was quite something else. I'll tell you about that in a second, but have a look at this little hut. 
Now I booked this up way way in advance a few months ago so I knew it was going to be such a tough walk that I quite fancied a little treat so here I am in this little hut and it was great last night I'm not tidied up yet you'll need to excuse the mess I'll have a look at that um, and I slept like a log in there it was absolutely brilliant so it was so yesterday I had uh, quite a day of walking. I was up at 7.30 in the morning and I didn't actually get into here, Ben Glass, until five past eight in the evening. So that was really quite a lot of walking for me. The trail was very rocky and the further that you got into it, you realised this is not going to change. This is going to be like this all the way. And it was. Large rocks that you're actually walking on. Quite sore on your feet after a while. There were some very large, impressive rock faces that you had to walk past. And I really enjoyed those bits. And then the trail took me down to the very edge of Loch Lomond. And you just had to be careful that you didn't get your feet wet or slip into the loch. And there was lots of ups and downs on that path. And sometimes you'd come to bits where the path would just seem to fall away in front of you and you'd look down and think, how am I going to get down there? You just have to look and select the stones that you're going to stand on and just be very, very careful as you went down. There was bridges and there was ladders to go up. One ladder in particular, very steep. And I thought about filming myself going up it. I thought, no, no. Thankfully, a couple of guys came down, so I filmed them just to let you see how steep it is. Are we now YouTube stars? You are. <laughs> oh, life. You both are. <laughs> and, uh, as long as my battery holds out. <laughs> All right, take it easy on that. I was born in the vertical. Oh, the vertical. good for you. <laughs> good for you. you. Cheers. And some bits were really quite a squeeze to get through. Right, that's me leaving Ben Glass. I had a fantastic stay here. Really, really good. Highly recommend Ben Glass Farm Campsite. What I stay in. Last night, I treated myself to. Uh, burger and chips in the bar. There was great live music going on. I didn't stay there for that long though. I just had something to eat and then I went to my bed, crashed out and dropped my bag off at the baggage pickup point. I'll tell you, the best £65 that I have ever spent. Ever. So much better to be just carrying this little bag. And today the path is taking me quite gently onto this stretch of the West Highland Way and I'm going to be doing 13 miles today from Benglass all the way to Tindrum. Now, past halfway on the West Highland Way, which was just back there at the cut-off for Crean Larach. I stopped there to have a spot of lunch. It was actually an extension of breakfast, because at breakfast time I'd ordered two breakfast rolls with square sliced sausage, and I could only manage one of them, so decided to pop the other one into my bag and have it for my lunch. Okay, it was cold, but still good. You've got to come to Scotland to get square sliced sausage. I'm going to do it here. 
The next part of the trail takes me through woodlands, and I just love these bits, being among the trees with just the sound of the birds chirping away to keep me company. The trail follows a stream that takes me below an old railway bridge with some impressive arches. Then a wooden bridge over the river Fillin. And the Tindrum community woodland is the start of a short walk into Tindrum. I've arrived in Tindrum and I'm at my campsite for tonight. It's the By The Way campsite and youth hostel. And guess what? I'm treating myself to another cabin tonight. Yeah, I am. Well, the thing is, Trish and I had originally booked this up as a camper van stop. Trish was going to meet me here and I was going to have a night in the camper van. Obviously can't do that now, we've sold the camper van. So, decided to swap it for a little cabin. Why not? You want to have a look? Come on then. Here it is. Camping cabin number three. There we are. Double beds, two twin beds, single occupancy. And that's me. And I'm actually looking quite organised for the change. So I am. So that'll do me for tonight, I'm sure. Tomorrow, it's from here, Tindrum, I'm going all the way up to Glencoe. So the drama of all these mountains starts tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Day five, and it's Tindrum to Glencoe today. Now this walk is 20 miles. I actually made a mistake when I was talking about the Loch Lomond walk. I was saying, oh, this is a 20 miler. It wasn't a 20 miler, it was a mere 17 and a half miles. <laughs> a mere 17 and a half miles. Today definitely is 20 miles and it's going to take me over Rannoch Moor, the largest expanse of nothingness in the UK, other than a moor of course, and apparently it's quite hard going on your feet. So all that's to come, plus it's been chucking it down all night. So I've got the full set of waterproofs on today. That's never pleasant walking in waterproofs. Hi there. It's great who you meet when you're doing this walk on the West Island Way. I just met a couple of lost Mexicans. I think they must have taken a wrong turn. <laughs> this is uh, Luis and Hi. Eduardo. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hello. they've come here all over the way from Mexico and uh, we've been walking for a little bit of a while. You enjoying the walk so far, guys? I love lovely place. Nice to meet. We love brown. You love we, the wee brown van? <laughs> we, 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 we like that van. We like being here. And you're enjoying Scotland so far? We love it. We love it. That's good. Well, maybe I'll catch you guys again on the trail a little bit later. Sure. All right. Enjoy, Enjoy your, your walk. Trip, Enjoy you. your Bye. walk. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, you know, the different people that you actually meet when you're out on this trail uh, from all over the world. That's the first couple of guys I've met from Mexico, I have to say. So I'm a little bit late in starting. I headed off at eight o'clock because I decided to uh, pop in for something to eat at the Real Food Cafe. Is there any other type of food? Pretend food, maybe? But anyway, it was good. I had a bacon roll and a cup of coffee. And I thought, that'll set me up for the day. So the walk starts off from Tindrum, just past the Green Welly stop. But I didn't go in there. It's a bit of a tourist trap, to be honest. And, yeah, about 20 miles to go all the way up to Glencoe. Uh, so far, it's very, very muggy. No rain on us yet, and I'm hoping it stays that way. This is quite a steep rocky bit, so I need to be careful, and the walk is going to take me underneath the railway. Plenty of headroom at least. <laughs> Well, I decided to take off my waterproof jacket because it can get a little bit sweaty in there. 
so if it's not raining it's best to take it off it's in my bag at the top ready to just grab at a moment's notice if the rain comes back on and although it's very very misty at the moment there's no sign of it I'm doing this walk on my own, but a lot of people like to do it in groups for the companionship and encouragement that you might need from time to time. I'm just coming in now to the Bridge of Orkey. You have to cross a busy road here. That was me getting away in the Bridge of Orchid Hotel. A lot of people stop here for a break, but it's a bit too early for me. So I'm going to go on a bit for another few miles. I'm sure there's another hotel where I can stop. There's a small hill here with a cairn and I'm going to claim the top stone for a short time at least before taking in the views over Loch Tulla. Then it's onward over Rannach Moor to the Inveroran Hotel. Brought some sandwiches and I've just bought this and this in the wee shop there here at Inverarnon because the bar's not open yet, it doesn't open until two o'clock and as it happens it has actually turned out really humid now so I stopped a while back and I managed to get my waterproof trousers off so I found somewhere to sit down just on a log and got these off and hopefully now there'll be a little bit of more room in my bag now that I've uh, eaten this lunch and I'll be able to get this jacket off and get it into the bag uh, and that'll be for the second half of this walk because I'm about halfway now. So I'll have this and then I'll be getting back on the trail. But not before I get smidged up. I find that smidge is the best thing to fend off the wee beasties. It's turned out to be very humid today and it feels good to be walking without a jacket on. This is the old cattle drover's road to Glencoe. And I doubt much has changed since the old cattle drovers would bring their cattle down from the north down to the markets in the south. The road certainly looks like it's not changed. Last night's puddles are starting to be topped up, but I decide to plod on without putting on my waterproofs. It's actually quite good having a few cool drips raining down, having been so humid. When the wind picks up, I decide to put the waterproofs on after all, because it looks like heavier rain is coming my way. But it doesn't, and shortly after, the waterproofs are coming off again. This would be a great little wild camping spot. They're pretty few and far between once you get onto Rannach Moor. Really not many places like this, but this is ideal. But not for me, I'm going on to the campsite at Glencoe. I have a drink of water before I go. My feet are reluctant to get on that trail again because I have another few hours of this before I arrive at Glencoe. Here I am, I'm at Glencoe and I'm in a little hobbit hut. <laughs> I could hardly stand when I arrived, so I managed to get one. Thankfully, there was a cancellation. So if I had something to eat, I'm going to hit the showers very shortly too. And that'll do me nicely for tonight. And I'm having an early night. It's 7am next morning and there's clear views over Glencoe. I head up to the restaurant, which is more like a canteen actually, for breakfast. It's closed and doesn't open until 8am. So plan B, hot foot it down the road half a mile to King's House Hotel for breakfast. The trail goes past there anyway. 
Inside I have a breakfast roll which has just about everything on it before checking the map of the walk ahead. Well that was very nice, enjoyed that and I've only got eight and a half miles today from here at King's House to Kinloch Leven. It does however take in the infamous Devil's Staircase. It's a flat and easy walk from King's House. It feels like the trail is giving me a bit of a break before I need to take on the Devil's Staircase. From here there are superb views of Buchelet of Moor, the iconic mountain that guards the entrance to Glencoe. Two posts mark the start of the Devil's Staircase, and straight away I can tell it's going to be a steep walk, but I'm still feeling fresh and glad to be doing this stretch in the morning. The trail twists and turns up the slope in a zigzag fashion, and there's rocks and chunky gravel underfoot, and I'm glad to have my walking poles with me. The Devil's Staircase will take me to the highest point on the West Highland Way, at 259 metres. I've reached the top and once again stake my claim as the top stone on the cairn. Then I start the long descent to Kinloch Leven. The first part of the descent is by far the best, with glorious views over the Mamores range of mountains. Further down, the trail becomes a wide gravel road for the industrial vehicles associated with the dam and the six huge water pipes that run all the way down the hill to the hydroelectric plant at Kinloch Leven. It may not look all that attractive, but it's an environmentally friendly way of producing electricity, and that's the main thing. As I come into Kinloch Leven, I pass these colourful camping huts, and for a moment I'm tempted. But no, I walk into the village, which is a popular tourist destination, and then I head over the River Leven to where I'll be sleeping tonight. But before I get there, I spot a right little gnome from Gnome. How long did it take you to amass this lot? Oh, it's a few years. It must have been. Yeah. I love it. Good. This'll do me. The McDonald Hotel. It looks very nice indeed but I'm camping in the hotel grounds for tonight. I've arrived early, so I pick the best pitch. And when I'm all pitched up, I think the wee brune tent looks inviting and cosy. I should sleep well. That's me leaving Kinloch Leven on day seven of the West Highland Way. So it's Kinloch Leven all the way to Fort William. Now when I get there, I'm going to meet up with Trish and Kira, and we're going to be staying in a little hut at Glen Nevis campsite, so that should be fun. Looking forward to this day, 15 miles to Fort William. Um, a bit later starting than I wanted to be, it's about 20 past 9. <laughs> um, but I wanted to have some breakfast, so I had some breakfast, which was nice, although a little bit stingy perhaps, just one of everything. But I felt like I needed a bit of breakfast. I had a good night's sleep. The midges were really bad this morning. They were trying to get in my tent, something terrible. So I had to basically put all my clothes and everything on, pack up inside the tent, and then just quickly grab the tent and put it into the bag before the midges got me. Right, enough blethering. I need to get on with this walk. to a little woodland clearing and it's a good spot for lunch and it's another extension of breakfast from the hotel toasted marmalade sandwiches Paddington Bear would be proud of me I'm sure I've caught up again with Luis and Eduardo from Mexico and we walked together for a while
I'm coming to the part of the walk where the views are dominated by the mighty Ben Nevis, or at least they would be on a clear day. Today its head is in the clouds, but an impressive sight all the same. I should shortly be coming into Fort William. That was hard work. The gravel, well I say gravel, the rocks that they'd put down were very sore on my feet. Honestly, felt like they were tearing my feet to shreds, the soles on my feet. But this is definitely a little bit more like it. And I should be in Fort William very shortly. We've arrived at the original end of the West Highland Way. They moved it to the centre of the town in 2010, but then, at last... We made it! Thank you now for everyone. Well done. Thank you for everyone. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well done. The man with the sore feet. All right. I know exactly how he feels. Oh. We made it. Your knee, you must lower down your knee for uh, <laughs> 40 degrees. Oh, 40 degrees. <laughs> I, I know who's of his hotel. Up there. <laughs> I can't get it down. Luis and Eduardo have their photos at the man with the sore feet. And there we are, the three amigos. Trish picked me up from the end of that walk and very relieved I was too. We've been for something to eat and now we're going to stay in a little pod at Glen Nevis. And here it is. Quite funky looking thing. Don't you think? Hmm? Funky little pod? Yeah. I like the shape and I like the wood. What I didn't like was the price. £135 for one night in a cabin in what is effectively a shed. So let's see, what does £135 get you in Glen Nevis? Ooh! Actually, it looks rather nice. Go on then, give us the tour. What's the need to I'll put the lights on so we can see. Well. You still figuring out how to do that? There we go. There we go. Look at that, eh? Like coming and I'll put the heating on. Right, well, there's the heating. You'll there's put the heating on. Underfloor heating. Very nice. Oh, look at this. Well, I'm kind of starting to see why it's £135. I still think it's a bit steep, but. And today, boys and girls, we're going through the round window. But yeah, £135. Thing is, it's a very, very popular place and lots of walkers obviously terminate the walk here and this is where they come. So they're busy, they're busy, they're busy. And people are paying it. Oh, we're paying it, so they're getting away with it. Right, Kira? Kira, it's time to wrap it up. You going to say goodbye to everybody? Well, I guess it's up to me to do that. I hope you've enjoyed watching my adventure on the West Highland Way. Would I do it again? Ask me in another couple of weeks. Mm -hmm.